Hi, I'm Miss Marcy, and you are listening to Conversations with Miss Marcy podcast. If you are looking for watered down conversations, this might not be the podcast for you. I'm just saying. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Miss Marcy. I am Miss Marcy. To all of my first time listeners, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. And to all of my weekly listeners and we and continued supporters, thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you so much for sharing this podcast. And thank you so much for just, you know, reaching out to me via email, hitting me up, giving me feedback, and all, all that good stuff. All right, so let me go ahead and get into this thing. I am with two lovely guests. They are back. Mr. Mitigated Girl. It's your boy. What's up, peoples? And Miss Kristen. Hey, y'all. All right, y'all. So, um, how's it going? How was everybody's week? That's good. We, um, our um, group participated in the um, African American uh, Wellness Walk at oh, Children's nice. Hospital over the weekend. I volunteered. We was passing out water. Some of the ladies uh, ran. Next year, I am going to do the 5K next year. But it was a nice event. Okay. It was down there at Children's Hospital. It was really nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I um, went to uh, the Tomato Festival. That was real nice. And they had Arrested Development there. Yeah, I heard. How was, was it? It was nice. Well, we went. We didn't know they were going to be there. We, I just... I, I don't know. To, what was the name? Preach. The leader, yeah, the, the, leader. Leader, the leader preached, yeah. yeah. And but they had like two other members, but they wasn't the original members though. But they still sounded good though. Everybody sounded good and stuff. They put on a good show. And like everybody was all into it. Black people, white people, everybody was all into it. <laughs> and um I like I said, I didn't know they were gonna be there. I just happened to know I mean I just happened to see them there because I always go to the tomato festival every year. So, you know, just just to be going. Did you play a game of horseshoes? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Right. Well, what is that about? What is when she say that? No, I no, no, no. The tomato festival. What is what is Oh, the... it's it's just a festival, but it's just the the theme is tomatoes and you know, funny enough, we couldn't find no uh fried uh green uh green fried tomatoes. Uh, mm, you know, tomato sauce. Yeah, we had some last year there, but we couldn't find them. fried green tomatoes. I don't know what that was about this year, but yeah, um, but it's just you know, just the community, you know, right here is right here at the park, right across, right next door. So we just walked over there, and it was such a nice day out. Mm. I was like, okay, why not? It was real nice though. Yeah. That's dope. So next year you're gonna participate and fry up some fried green tomatoes. No, I I don't participate. I just go and eat and walk around and <laughs> enjoy the. Festivities. You see a void and don't want to fill it. Ain't that a? So how was the six one four? Yeah, about that. Good concert. Um, you see, uh, you had a couple local artists, uh, but you had uh, Mike Jones, Donnell Jones. Um, Too Short, Kiki Wyatt, and Ja Rule. They was all there? Yeah. Shut up. Scarface was supposed to come, but he getting a kidney transplant. So, um, no, he is for real. real. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought that was a joke. No, I would never. I can't play about face. She didn't mean it, but I will no, give I you her didn't. address, face. <laughs> if you hear this. Yeah, he a real Scarface fan. Yeah. Oh, wow. I am too, but oh my gosh. He's oh, really wow, a, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd have gave him my kidney. Um, But yeah, they, um, uh, real quick, Mike Jones did all right. It was the crowd. It, everybody was hot. It was hot as hell out there, and they took forever to let us in. So people was already like, I'm ready to go home as soon as they get in there. They just frustrated, just like, well, play and be good in front of us, nigga. <laughs> so Mike Jones, he didn't get no reaction, a very little. He, uh, me, moderate reaction. Then he left. You know, you could tell, like, the the the, 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 the artist was like, Shit, they tough out there today. People, how y'all feel? You know, they ask you that like 90 times. <laughs> right. And like nobody says anything. Uh, <laughs> Kiki Wyatt built like a brick shit house. Oh my really? gosh, that thing right there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't know she had 10 kids. Yeah. Wow. I didn't, I would, yeah, I see why. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> a wagon. Uh, so she got better uh, rece- um, reception from the crowd. It was the sound system, most of all. Uh, then, Donnell Jones, he was just terrible. All the way oh, around. What? 
I'm gonna keep it real. Shout out Donnell, man. But, <laughs> we were terrible. It was just terrible. The women was rocking with him because they knew his song. Right. But it wasn't a lot. They was just like. Eh. He didn't sound good. He didn't, didn't sound good. Wow. And again, maybe it was the sound system. But, you know, it, 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 it didn't do it. Short came out there, did his thing. He arguably could have held it. What's my favorite word? Bitch. And that's what he came out with. And he was <laughs> killing it. You know, that's just what Short do. Um, hmm. And then John Rule. People was leaving on job because he came because it was late and people was frustrated. But when I say you can see why he was the headliner, he tore that motherfucker up. Did he? He whooped that ass and uh, thoroughly satisfied. Glad I stayed. Where was this held at? The comments, Columbus comments. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So it was it was pretty dope. They got a free concert this this weekend coming up for, called the Deal Breakers. And I guess they're like a R and B band, but they're a free concert at the Commons this weekend, so I might go check them out. Donnell Jones' performance should have been free. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, and the um, <laughs> y'all know that Aretha movie came out this weekend too. Mm. Then am I gonna am I gonna see that? No, mm -hmm. I want to stream it. I want to bootleg it. In support mm -hmm. of Aretha Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to check it out, though. So let me ask y'all something. Before we get into the topic of today, I want to I want to kind of ask a fun question real quick. Just for the heck of it, I saw this on Facebook, and I thought it was pretty fun. What was the, uh, of, of all the old school TV shows, TV sitcoms or whatever, mm -hmm. who had the best theme song? WKRP. In good times. That boring ass uh, WKRP, WKRP in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. It's a dope song. I don't care what you say. See, I like that. Cincinnati. It's the song. Boring. No, you don't even listen to the words. You got to listen to the words. <laughs> and then the ending theme song of good times when it's going off. That's <laughs> it's a really late on. Yeah, that's Hanging dope. in the child line. <laughs> no, it's... No, uh, what's her name? Bernadette uh, Thelma. Mm -hmm. She said they say hanging in a jiving. No, -uh, it says hanging in the child line. Okay. She said hanging in a jiving. Hanging oh, okay. in a jiving. That's okay. what she said in the I interview. I think happy days. Monday, Tuesday, happy, happy days. days. <laughs> Pull out that shit. You gonna this WKRP for? Uh, I mean, that was a boring show. Did you actually watch that? WKRP in Cincinnati. It was a good show. Johnny Fever. I thought it was so fucking boring. It's in Ohio. It's, well, yeah. it's base. It's the O. Maybe because I was a, a kid. Hater. And yeah. then you're going to go with this pleather jacket wearing. <laughs> I used to think WKRP was a boring show in MASH. Do not ever put them on the same. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't <laughs> ever put them on the same. Yeah. Well, who, who, well okay. Who, what, who you got? I, I got three of them. I got Facts of Life, The Jeffersons, and The Golden Girls. Thank Golden Girls for classic. being a friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Travel down the road and back again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, that was that's that's right. Right. <laughs> Them songs had those those old those old school um, comedy. Let me know what the sitcoms. They had substance to their theme songs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, they talked about something. Even though it was just a theme song. So but they got be KRP. Man, whatever. You still on it because it's from Ohio. <laughs> and fuck that out. But I think the Jeffersons is the most classic. Because yeah. everybody know, fish don't find in the kitchen. Yeah. Fish don't yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, that was that yeah. What about different strokes? Yeah, that was a good one. But it still wasn't like the Jeffersons. Well, we're, we're moving up because it sounds like fucking. Yes, all that soul. What about uh, give Amen. me a break? Didn't give me a break. Oh, give me a break. Give yeah. me a break. Me. No, right. Okay, it was. Uh, so, me. <laughs> so I just want to know <laughs> what y'all thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so now we could go on and get into today's topic. So <laughs> we are talking today about women. Knowing how to separate their feelings from a previous breakup with a husband or a baby daddy. Separating those feelings from their relationship with him, from his relationship with the child. Okay? Now, 
We might ruffle some feathers. Spicy. But you mm. know, y'all know how I say. Y'all know what I say. You might get mad about what I said. You might get glad about what I said. But either way, I said what I said. Okay. Right. All right. So, um, what I say is that um, even though I don't have kids or anything, I have seen people, um, you know, that I that have been affected by. You know, their mom having a certain um, attitude or certain, you know, certain uh, energy towards them based on the relationship that they have with their father. Okay. So, and it could be because maybe he was a horrible husband to the mother or horrible boyfriend or whatever, but he is a great father to them Um, because, because that can happen. Um, not everybody, just because a man is a great father doesn't mean he's a great husband or a great boyfriend. There's a such thing as a horrible husband, but a great father. So when you have that, and the, the, like I said, the, the, the people that I know that has experienced that, um, it was that case, you know, the, 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 the father was horrible to the mother, but then when the separation happened or the divorce happened, the, the child was still had a close relationship with the father. And sometimes women, I think sometimes women get so caught up in their emotion that they don't know how to separate it. And they actually become offended by the child having still a close relationship with that father. And I, I like I said, even though I don't have kids, I can kind of understand that emotion because it's like, hold up. I carried you. I pushed you out. I made a lot of sacrifices. And you, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you want to love this man who dogged me out. You're my child. I'm not saying that's that's right, but I, I literally understand that emotion. But it's not right because a child don't know the father as your man. That was your man. That was your husband. That was your man. Mm -hmm. The child just know that man as his or her father. And they're going to operate like a child. Mm -hmm. You know, when they see daddy, 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 oh my gosh, daddy. You know, daddy, walk on water as far as the child is concerned. Mm -hmm. But the mama said back when her eyes roll like, mm-hmm. Sorry, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is my child just, just so in love with their daddy? I hate that motherfucker. But that's just what it is. The child don't know no better. It's just, that's their father. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's what I've seen. Well, I've always been the type of parent that I let my children figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and they have. Um, you know, have there been times where I roll my eyes to myself or have called my girlfriends or my sister, mom, and been frustrated about the situation? Of course. But I never let my kids, you know, hear me going all along. Right, yeah. Um, I would just allow them to figure it out. And honestly, like, that's like the best method. Yep. Um, you know, my oldest son, um, his father, you know, I, I, I never let him feel any certain type of way about him. I, I did the best that I could to make sure I didn't say anything in front of him. And then when he became an adult and he's like dealing with him now, the father is like trying to turn my son or say stuff about me to my son. And it's like, you know, my son has came to me here recently and has said, Dad said, you X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yeah, but did your dad tell you the whole story? Like, so it's like, you end up not having to prove anything. Like, mm -hmm. they kind of help you prove that you're okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, even now, like, my son is like, man, Dad be saying this, but... You was always there. You he wasn't this. And then where then I didn't have to say anything. Like even when my son said came has come to me as an adult and it says stuff that pissed me straight off, he's still figuring it out like, Man, dad be tripping, dad this and I'm like mm -hmm. I mean I still even when he says any stuff now, I just let him talk. But I've always even with and my younger son, his father, um, he's always around. But being a father takes more than always being around. You know, there's, you got to financially take care of him. So he doesn't, he's not the best at that. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, you know, I just, 
I just don't have it to do. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, they do. They figure it out. My son knows, and without me saying anything, that if he, when he needs something, he know who to call. You know, and he's fourteen, but he know who to call me because he knows that from what he's seen, his dad is only going to be there to a certain degree, and he know mom gonna be there for everything. So, I mean, a lot of times you just don't, you don't have to say anything. You have to just kind of let that stuff show for itself. As long as you don't feel like your child is in danger around this person. Right. Yeah, let them figure it out. They yeah, will. like you said. <laughs> but no, that's a good though. That's a good. It's like you yeah, let them figure it out because they will. Um, I, I just think sometimes parents do put their kids in their business. Hey, thanks so much for listening. That's it for now. To finish listening to the rest of this podcast, go on over to Anchor, Spotify, iHeart, Apple, and any other podcast platform.